Hello again, everyone. Um, so um, do we have anyone here who's using WAM to receive updates from WSO2? All right, yeah. And uh, even to some extent, were you able to automate uh, receiving WAM and, uh, and pushing those updates you get through WAM into your production or, or non-production environments? Yes, you are doing it, awesome. So, uh, do you hear, uh, when it comes to WAM and, uh, and operations, uh, we get treated, like the operations team at WSO2 gets treated as a customer. So whenever they introduce a new uh, tool or a, or a uh, new process, we get to try that first. So that's not cool as it sounds. It's a, sometimes it's a painful thing, but uh, we get to try it first, and based on our feedback, they improve the tools and the process, and after that, uh, it reaches to you. So uh, let me like, put my operations hat on and uh, tell you a little about how our life was before WAM. And uh, with the introduction of WAM, the challenges we had to face, and then how we understood WAM in terms of operations, and how we adopted it, how we adjust our automation with it, and then the present state. So our life before WAM. So you all know, if you, are, if you have a, a production support, if you, have sub, if you are a subscribed user to WSO2, and if you are not using WAM yet, you are receiving updates in form of patches and you get patches only after you create a ticket. If you run into a problem and you report it as a ticket, then you get a fix for that. That means you are getting fixes only after going through a failure. And it was the same with us before. And when we go through one failure, we received one patch, and it keeps coming on. And when you report another ticket, you get another patch. And when, and when you are maintaining a serious setup, when you're running a production setup, dealing with a large number of patches in some cases, it's not easy. And you need to keep track of patches, you need to keep a maintenance log, you need to have a log of uh, which patch, which, uh, which patch carries which number, uh, was provided to which, uh, which problem, Likewise, you cannot always go to the JIRA and figure out for which pro to what sort of problems we receive these patches. Because uh, due to a regression problem, if you want to revert a patch, then you need to understand. Or if you come across with another problem and you have updated patch, a set of patches, you have applied a set of patches recently, then you need to understand like, which patch you need to revert. Likewise, for that, keeping track of patches and maintaining, uh, maintaining a change log is critical. So that was the story uh, we had, that, 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 that was the life we lived on. We lived before WAM. And then on one gloomy day, uh, we got an email saying, uh, we, have, uh, we are going to build this uh, update, con update uh, delivery concept, and uh, we have done a POC, and, uh, and WSO2 wanted us. Like I told you, like, we are getting, our team is getting treated as a customer when it comes to these sort of matters, and WSO2 wanted us to try out this tool. And now what happens? The moment you uh, go and pitch this, the moment you present this tool to the team, the natural resistance came. And the team was going as, we need to put extra, more, extra effort to incorporate this into our daily day-to-day -day operations, and we need to learn about this thing, and we have to, with, with our, all the other works going on, we need to spend additional cycles now to understand an additional tool. And uh, we are asking to use another tool. So it's natural that when you present a technology to a team or a person, 
you don't expect to fall in love with that in the first go, right? It takes time. And the critical thing we had, the problem we had was this tool did not comply with our existing automation. Because we had this uh, perfect thing that was running for a while, which supports applying patches. But now, we cannot use the same set of puppet modules to use with WAM. And then we had a whole series of back and forth meetings with uh, the team who was developing WAM. And, uh, and then uh, uh, we were getting lots of uh, minor releases. We received lots of minor uh, update releases for WAM tool. And we tried those. And we provided our feedback again. And based on our experience and feedback, they kept improving this tool. And that gave us some time to understand what WAM is trying to solve. And how, as a team, as operations team, how we can get benefited from that. So it's important to understand what is WAM and what does it do. So the simple answer is, WAM is a tool or a service that keeps your WSO2 products up to date. And it will keep it up to date with bug fixes, with fixes, and with security updates. So when we are trying to learn WAM, we wanted to learn it in a way that it is something that we are already familiar with. So uh, we are primarily using uh, Debian or Ubuntu platform for our operations. And we started looking at WAM as, the, as APT. So APT is a service that talks to a remote repository, receive updates, receive packages. The only difference is APT installs the updates and packages into the operating system, but WAM does not. WAM will create the bundle. One will create a new distribution package, and it just leave it there. So we were quite comfortable with using apt, APT, for package management and security updates. And we wanted to use, follow the same process and try to incorporate the same set of tools for WAM. And there was a, there was a gap that was the installation part, and we had to find a solution for that by our own. And WAM is a command, it, 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 it has uh, two variations. It has a UI and it has a command line. And the command line utility is very easy to use. That means you can script it quite easily. And WAM creates a new product distribution. Creating a new product distribution means the way we have written our puppet modules earlier, if you, have, if you, if you, have, if you are familiar with our uh, puppet modules, uh, they were written in a way, like I mentioned earlier, you, get the, you have the vanilla product, and you apply configuration templates, patches, and the customizations, and the applications or services that you, you have developed on top of WSO2 platform, and combine all together and create a new distribution. So that's how our puppet modules were written. And WAM comes and it creates a new pack. So that means with the updates, we looked at looked at one distribution as a new vanilla update. It's like we are going to a new product version. Because every time you do an upgrade or go for a new product version, you get a new distribution. So the similar thing happens here. So we take the, uh, we bi uh, build the updated distribution, and uh, we wanted to uh, combine that with the existing puppet modules, and it worked. That means we were able to use a better portion of existing automation along with the WAM distribution. And then we realized that WAM helps to maintain stability across all customer setups. It is very critical for us as a vendor. Because previously how it was, only after someone reports a ticket, we provide the fix. 
and we have the fix, it's in our repositories, and we wait until someone else come and report the same problem so that we can grab that fix and give to a, dif give to a different person. But, that, but that's some sort of, like, that's not the right model as we understood it. We want, since we already have a bunch of fixes in our repositories, why not distribute it among all our subscribed users? And make sure that no one, no one would run into the same set of problems again. And it's easier for us in terms of handling the support load. And it's important for you as subscribers to maintain a healthy system even without knowing that you might run into a particular problem one day, you will still receive the fix rate. So as a vendor, it was very critical for us. And the adoption. After realizing all that, and after going back and forth with the WAM team, we started adjusting our automation, existing automation, uh, to work with WAM. We understood its benefits, and we rethought of our automation, and we identified where we need to adjust, and then uh, we wanted to become an example for customers, for our customers. Because we, wanted to we want to find something, we wanted to find a proper solution that we can distribute across all our subscribed users and make sure that they don't go through the same pain. <coughs> so, uh, this is what we found out. And uh, if you remember, during my previous talk, I have mentioned, uh, as part of the change delivery pipeline, uh, that we are running cha pushing changes into production. Even though I have mentioned that, in a, that as a single box, this is the extracted version of it. So, we receive updates from WAM, and we combine th that with the Puppet module. So WAM gives you a vanilla distribution. And in Puppet, you have configuration templates, the customizations, the applications and services you have. You combine that. And then, again, you validate your Puppet code. And then comes the additional part, the automator. Here, again, we use Capistrano to orchestrate this change uh, across multiple clusters. <coughs> And what we did was, uh, we, were we are using Nginx as our load balancer. And we wrote uh, a bunch of Capistrano recipes to identify the upstreams in the Nginx. Uh, none of these things were hard coded. Everything happens dynamically. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and Capistrano uh, recipe will go and figure out uh, the upstream nodes of a particular cluster it will remove one node from the cluster. It will fence one node from the cluster and uh, apply Puppet for it. And after applying Puppet, it will run some tests in the local mode to make sure that uh, uh, the, the final uh, product was uh, brought up uh, without any errors, brought up properly. And it will run some uh, tests to make sure that uh, the node is ready to serve requests, and it will add that node back into the load balancer. And then it will do, follow the same, same process across all nodes in the cluster. You take one node, you make the changes, you apply changes, and you add it back. So in our public cloud, there are, uh, there are about uh, 15 to 20 clusters and we run this tool every time to push WAM updates into all those clusters. <clears throat> so uh, from the folks uh, who are using WAM already, uh, do you have anything similar to this? Or how do you, how do you uh, push your changes uh, into WAM? Okay. Instead of Capistrano using Terraform for the infrastructure as code, uh, but uh, 
we curious to figure out how is the bomb update is being captured, the event, the trigger? Yeah. So uh, what in our story, uh, since we are again part of the support system, we received the WAM announcement through support. So similar to you, we receive an email, we see an event in the JIRA saying that WAM is ready. And uh, we continue, and that's one way. And the other way is uh, we have an automated uh, script running in, in a schedule, it's a schedule script that checks for WAM updates. It does a WAM update, and when you have an update, WAM triggers an email. So you need an, e uh, an, authentic uh, an auth authenticated and authorized account uh, to use WAM. And to that email address, you will receive an email when you have an update. So we have that process running continuously. And that's the pipe. That's actually that email. Uh, uh, we send that email into a, we have a, uh, a different inbox created to receive all sorts of alerts. And uh, we form those alerts in a way that we can programmatically read the email and understand what sort of an email that is. And through that, we trigger various sort of pipelines. So we have such uh, systems for monitoring. And uh, monitoring, uh, like, because we have like, multiple systems distributed across all over the world. And uh, we are receiving alerts to that uh, in form of emails. And we, through that, we understand uh, what sort of an alert that is, and, uh, and we display those things in, in dashboards. Because uh, in most cases, uh, when we are running systems in very closed environments, there's no way other than emails that we can trigger an event out. So most of the customers, like, especially if they, are, like, uh, if they want to comply with uh, high, very like, complex security standards, they don't want to uh, expose any sort of a port or, 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 really, or, or let an event leave their data center. Um, for us to capture that and, uh, and act upon. So, so far, the easiest mechanism we found that was SMTP. So we cap capture the changes locally, and we get those uh, delivered to us over SMTP in a format that our tools can read and understand. Uh, and that's how we uh, keep in sync. So similarly, uh, we use some sort of a similar uh, approach with WAM. But the only difference is when you have customizations. Because in public cloud, uh, we, are not, we have done lots of customizations, especially to the API manager, uh, store and publish applications. And uh, since those were in Jaggery, uh, when you release Jaggery level fixes with WOM, still we have to go through some manual effort uh, to run diffs across the files we have and what's been provided with WAM, and uh, merge those changes, and then uh, use that to build the final distribution. So we don't have an answer for that, even as of now. Um, but hopefully, uh, uh, with future releases of WAM, those will get resolved. And we are too waiting for that. But other than that, all the other changes can be easily uh, pushed and uh, uh, push to Puppet and get delivered into production. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, you mentioned about the local tests yeah. that are being done on the, the new node that you took off yeah. from the cluster. We also had talked about the similar approach. We have the Postman collections okay. of test cases to test the new node. And we uh, realized that we could test it locally, but before I can add the I realized that I have to make changes to the database URLs, I have to change to the file system URL so that it can function on the main cluster. Okay. Because local versus the global is different. Yeah. So I'm really curious how you are doing when the switchover between the local testing and the real live production setup. Yeah. So local in the sense, we are not taking that node away from where it is. We are just fencing it. We are just commenting out a, config, a line in the configuration file, and just making sure that we are not sending traffic to that particular node. Right. So, um, so uh, once we bring up the node, bring up the, uh, the carbon uh, runtime in that node, we run tests like, uh, if you remember, I have mentioned a tool, uh, a deployment monitor tool that talks to various admin services, yeah. 
and make sure that uh, the product uh, is functioning healthy. We run a bunch of selected tools against, uh, selected uh, tests Mice. against that. That's one way. And the other way is we run a bunch of known curl commands. So those are the two things that we do. Right. But the thing is, uh, we do not change database uh, URLs or file system URLs. In, uh, in, in, like, uh, we don't keep those things to local. Okay. Our, our database URLs and file system URLs all are standardized. And they are managed at puppet level. Correct. So when you are pushing changes, across all, it, the changes are consistent across all the nodes. Mm -hmm. So even when you run the local test, and you still have the configuration, new configuration came with the puppet that carries the correct uh, file system directories and the database URLs. Correct. Uh, then how are you doing the uh, a failover if you find that the new node is not performing? Yeah. And uh, how can you make sure it has not caused enough damage to the shared yeah. data store? So uh, if one of those tests we found that uh, did not run to the level we expect, or if we find any failures of the tests, we, so before running, uh, deploying this one based pack, what we do is we take a backup and keep, uh, keep a copy of the, exist, the older version of the distribution in the same file system. No, I meant the database state. Database state? Of the... Yeah. So the database state, again, uh, we are doing some research on that. We have not found a per perfect answer to automatically do changes in the databases. So... Uh, we have a bunch of guys actually already working on that. Uh, we have done this whole thing as, uh, as an intern project. So a bunch of interns actually built this entire thing. And now they're working on uh, database changes. Uh, so the last update I have about that is they have found some uh, utilities uh, that can uh, work with uh, MySQL schemas. They're running on MySQL with MySQL schemas and do rollbacks in an efficient way. They said they have found an open source tool for that. I am not quite sure what the tool is, but uh, probably by tomorrow, if you talk to me, I can uh, get that information from them. We and, use uh, MariaDB, so it's pretty close Okay, pretty, to, pretty much similar, yeah. Um, I will get sure. that information from them, and I will definitely let you know. Yeah, I would like to talk to you after yeah. this is over. Yeah, thanks. So the story after one. And fixes now comes. Uh, before we even run into a problem, we don't know. Uh, because when we are doing certain expansions and we uh, try to use the product, use uh, the same product in different ways, uh, we, we don't know that we might run into a, uh, a, a code base or a feature that is buggy or already have problems. But now, uh, when one customer or even us find a bug and get a fix, Everyone else get benefited from that. So at the end of the day, it's a win-win. If you find a bug and report it to the support system, you will receive an update. But at the same time, the, all the other subscribed users will receive the update as well. So you are helping them to fix some problems that, are already, that already exist in their setups. And in return, you are receiving fixes from other customers, from uh, tickets uh, created by other subscribed users, and you are getting benefited from that. And we don't have any more patches, and we altered, we had to alter our puppet modules to support that. And uh, patch management, uh, we don't do it anymore. And uh, uh, change log becomes uh, much simpler, much, it, it got much simplified. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, we could run a fairly relatively stable and secure environment with WAM. Um, do you have any questions? Yeah. Uh, automation sequences yourself. For me as a consultant, it doesn't matter. I get more work. 
Yeah. Uh, but for customers, they get really angry because they're used to like having just the patch file and restocking the server. Yeah. That's it. Now they have to have the responsibility to make as well. Exactly. So, uh, believe me or not, I had the same feeling and I went through the same pain when this was introduced to me. Uh, so we do not have this uh, solution uh, uh, made available publicly, but we, are, we will be doing it. We will be combining all these tools because usually uh, we open source most of the projects uh, that are done, that are being developed as intern projects. And uh, we will uh, package these things. We will provide some documentation. And actually that's the main purpose of uh, introducing this talk uh, in this track because we know that uh, WAM had created some buzz and uh, we got lots of uh, similar feedbacks from other customers as well. And uh, that's why we wanted to like, put some extra effort and, uh, and find a solution by your own and become an example and help you to make sure that you, don't, you, you would not run into the same problems that we ran into. So I cannot promise a day. I don't know like, uh, when we will be able to uh, release this. But uh, as a fact, I know that uh, it will happen. I'm sorry? Why Puppet? So uh, we started using Puppet several years back. And uh, back in those days, Ansible, Ansible uh, was not a ma major player um, in, 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 this, uh, in this context. Uh, back in those days, the main players were, players were Chef and Puppet. But now we understand that uh, going forward, uh, Ansible gives us lots of uh, advantages and it enables us to do things in a much more agile and flexible way. And uh, we have internally uh, started a conversation about adopting Ansible as well. And uh, we have done a couple of POCs and uh, Puppet will be there like it is. Uh, and uh, we are thinking of uh, adopting Ansible as well. So yes, moving towards, like, especially when we are uh, moving to containerized environments, Ansible gives a lot more value and agility over Puppet. It's true. Hi. Hi. Um, we have a lot of custom code or settings in the, in the config files, so the binaries are not a pain for us. Um, how do we figure out which config file has changed or which do we have to adapt? Is it done by Puppet itself or do we still have to, to crawl them through? Uh, so uh, what we have done is uh, we have written some scripts to run diffs uh, about uh, diffs against files that is provided by WAM and what we have in Puppet. And it will do a diff comparison and give us the list, list of files uh, that we have custom changes uh, that are in the file, and WAM had introduced some more changes into that files. So those cases, uh, we do it as of now, case by case, but most of the time we do not run into that problem. Uh, the only case that we run into that problem is when we are doing updates for API Manager. Again, that is with uh, uh, jaggery level changes. But uh, uh, if there are any, even right now, if you are given a patch, and that has a configuration part to go in, you still have to merge those things and do. And that is still there, but uh, I think uh, WAM, uh, the WAM team is working on a model where they can streamline it uh, in a better way, because we have provided our feedback on that, and uh, they, are, they are doing some work towards that uh, to make uh, our lives easier in that aspect. Any other questions? Yeah. Would you even need uh, Ansible or uh, similar when you're... Uh, would you even need, need Ansible or similar when you're actually going for the containerized version of the product? Because, I mean, then you could maybe do it in Docker Compose or similar and have uh, environment variables. Uh, would you even need that type of complex so, automation then? Uh, we need that to build the initial image. So once we build the container image, that, to do that part, only we need Puppet or Ansible. Once you build an image with uh, necessary configuration and uh, applications and uh, 
and uh, whatever, what, whatever your customizations. And once you build that, then you can simply reuse that image and spin any number of containers. But to build that, build the initial image, we still has to have some, some form of a way to manage and deal with changes. So for that only we use, uh, only to that level, uh, we right now use Puppet and, uh, and we are uh, hoping to use uh, Ansible. Yeah, so I can answer the, the question again. So yeah. basically, when you come to the, the container-based deployment, we can totally lie with the environment variable. Even we can avoid uh, puppet or other kind of language. But normally what we're seeing is, so they, our, all the, our customers are not going with containers. Some are uh, with the VM. So in that scenario, we need to configure VM image. So we, we are having with the one sync, Single configuration file called deployment YAML. So, like I said, so uh, so for that we can use Ansible. At, but in your, after building that image, we can configure that image using a non variable. How many? You mean contain images? Yeah. How many? Yeah. So the currently the, the API manager uh, the two one zero product. So if you are using OpenShift or Kubernetes, we are releasing one image, but with the config map, we can dynamically pass the configuration. But when you come to the API manager version three, that's also one image. Uh, that can the config can be passed in the environment variable. But say if you are you, if you are uh, deploying uh, the profile base that is gateway separately, store publisher separately, we can optimize the pack size by creating multiple images for a particular profile. Then configuration can be passed di passed dynamically. Okay. Yeah. Are we good? Uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much.